Hello, everybody, and welcome to this webinar presentation, LinkedIn Groups, Your Rolodex on Steroids. So the first thing I'm going to do is start with a vote. Um, you can answer this question, A, B, C, D, or E. Um, are you involved in any LinkedIn groups? A is no. <laughs> B is yes, but I never do anything with them. C is yes, but I find them completely overwhelming. It's usually C. D is yes, and I get great results from my connections. And E is yes, in fact, I have my own group. So go ahead and answer those questions. And I'll give you a few more seconds here. This also shows me how many people are actually on the call. <laughs> are you involved in any LinkedIn groups? Let's see how our results are looking. Looks like, yep, most of you are finding them a little bit overwhelming. And if you're just joining us, this is, in fact, the LinkedIn Groups webinar. And we are starting off with a poll, starting off with a little interactivity, making sure we're all on the same screen. <laughs> so asking the question, are you involved in any LinkedIn groups? And most of the answers seem to be falling between yes, but I never do anything with them. And yes, but I find them overwhelming, which is great. That's why you're on this webinar, and that will hopefully that will hopefully mean that you'll actually get something out of this webinar. All right, I'm going to leave the um, the voting up. Keep voting. We'll take a look at this at the end. And I noticed there is one question. Uh, we will answer questions at the, at the end of the presentation. Uh, <laughs> the, the one question was, yes, I am involved in groups, but I'm not seeing any success. So <laughs> that's a good option as well. And hopefully by the end of this webinar, you'll uh, start to see some success. So let's move along. A little bit about me. Um, if you have any questions for me at the end of the webinar that I don't cover, or if you want to connect with me or just send me an email, that's my email address, Vivica at LinkedIn to Business. You can find me on LinkedIn at www.linkedin.com forward slash in forward slash LinkedIn expert. Uh, of course, my website's linkedintobusiness.com. That is my cell phone number. Please don't call me in the next 45 minutes as I will be doing this presentation. And here's a little bit more about me. I guess the important thing to know is that I've been active on LinkedIn for going on six years now. Um, very just in love with the program, although sometimes it annoys me. Um, I am the moderator of the weekly LinkedIn chat. So if you are on Twitter, and that's where a lot of you found this webinar, if you're on Twitter on Tuesday nights at 5 p.m. PST, 8 p.m. EST, you can join us on the LinkedIn chat, continue this conversation. There's some excellent experts on that chat. And then if you're on LinkedIn, uh, one of the groups I do recommend you joining is our Linked Strategies group. It's the biggest LinkedIn strategies group on LinkedIn. And the rest is just blah, blah, blah about me. You can always find out about me on my website. So let's get into the meat of this. That's why you're on this call. <laughs> We're going to be covering today what's in a group, as in what groups should I join and why. Uh, when your hands are tied, the main reason I like groups is because they allow us to kind of get around LinkedIn's, uh, LinkedIn's strong suggestion that we only connect to people who are directly uh, or only connect to people that we know. And that, that really can tie your hands when you're trying to, um, to, to reach out and meet new folks. So we'll talk about that. Uh, reverse engineering, one of my favorite ninja tricks. Uh, the group member search, um, they've made some things harder on LinkedIn, but the group member search is a little bit easier than it used to be. Uh, the new skills program, in fact, I'm doing a webinar on skills next week, so I'll let you know more about that. But um, how to find groups specific to your skill set. And then when you're in a group, what do you say? How do you make a group useful? And then finally creating your own group on LinkedIn. 
Okay, so starting out, um, first of all, you can join up to 50 groups. Now, I recommend joining up to 50 groups, and you can apparently own an additional 10 groups. I've never, I LinkedIn keeps me around that 52, 53, even though I own six groups, but uh, LinkedIn tells you you can join up to 50 groups and own up to an additional 10, um, but let's just leave it at the 50. I think that that seems to be <laughs> more what we've been experiencing. And you'll probably only be really active in two or three of those groups. In the settings section, you can actually turn off your ability to get those daily or weekly digests from a group. So once you have joined the groups that you want to join, you'll you'll be it'll be pretty obvious to you which groups are useful to you, which groups that you interact in a lot, and you can get your daily digests from those groups. The folks, um, the groups that you're really joining just so you can get access to people, you'll probably not want to get a daily digest from those individuals. And that is found under the settings section on the top right hand side. I don't have a pointer on the top right hand side of your profile underneath your name is settings. And then under groups, you can set the, the, the mail you get from those groups. So Back to what we were talking about though, you can join up to 50 groups. Now what types of groups do you want to join? When you go to groups in the groups directory to do a search, what type of groups are you searching for? Well, there's your own industry group. And the reason you're going to join your own industry group is because there are other thought leaders, there are potential strategic partners. Uh, my friend Steve Cassidy, who I believe is on this call, um, has become an incredible partner for me. We share a lot of groups together. In fact, he, I've made him the co-moderator, not only of my LinkedIn chat, but also of my link chat group on LinkedIn. So you, you'll be able to find, meet, and start relationships with individuals in your own industry, and you can support each other's growth in your own businesses, become referral partners. Um, all, I, all the time I get requests to do things and I either don't have the time or it's, you know, it's not in my price range or, and I refer those requests on to other people. And those again are folks that you can meet in groups that are in your own industry. So to do that, you just go to groups, to the drop down menu, to groups directory, and type in whatever your industry is. Now, the second type of group, and maybe the most important group for you, is to join groups within your client's industry. So let's say you do accounting, but you like to do accounting for legal firms. Then you're going to join accounting groups, your own industry, but you're going to join legal industry groups as well. Or maybe you're a marketing professional, but you like to work with doctors because we all know most doctors don't know how to market their businesses. I uh, <laughs> hope I haven't offended any doctors on the call. Uh, so you would join groups, you know, medical groups, because that's maybe where the doctors are hanging out that can become your clients. So you're going to join groups in your client industry. And if you have different, if you know you have a variety of different client niche clients, then join a variety of different groups. Again, you can join up to 50. Alumni groups. Obviously, um, if you know, if you went to Harvard, then you should join the Harvard alumni group. If you didn't go to Harvard, don't try to join the Harvard alumni group because they won't let you in. <laughs> but they have alumni groups not only for your education, but also for your um, you know, corporate alumni groups, that kind of thing. So go ahead and check not only where you went to school, but where you've worked in the past. See if there's some alumni groups, especially those of you who are either looking for work or your um, consultants, like I am, it's always better to know somebody. So if you, through an alumni group, can get an introduction to an uh, industry um, executive or an executive at a company, boom, there you go. So join alumni groups. And then, of course, professional associations. Uh, if I'm a member of NSA, National Speakers Association, I should join the NSA group. If I'm a member of the ASTD, the, uh, then I should join the ASTD group. So any professional association that you are a member of in real life, IRL, see if they're on LinkedIn under the URL. So go check your professional groups. Again, 
it's mostly so that you can get a little bit of top of mind awareness. You know, maybe you'll see Jane in that professional group and go, oh my gosh, that's right. She's the executive director for this association and that would be a perfect place for me to go speak. Or that would be a perfect association that could use my product or service. So professional associations are excellent groups to join. Not all professional associations are on LinkedIn, but it can't hurt to check. Local groups. This one I really, really like because I don't know about you, but the town I live in, Fort Collins, Colorado, is awfully small. And I sometimes forget that I know people. And even though I'm a member of a lot of local groups here, I don't get to do as much local networking as I used to do because I'm, you know, I'm usually not in town. I'm usually traveling somewhere else to work. And so becoming a member of some local groups allows me to stay in touch with the locals even when I'm not here. So if you do a lot of face-to-face -face networking and either you can't make as many gigs as you used to be able to make or there's much, much, many, too many local groups, just join some of the local groups on LinkedIn and you can stay in touch that way. The other thing I like about local groups is you'll join, you'll meet some new people and then you can take them out to coffee. And again, they might become a perfect client, referral partner, strategic partner for you. And finally, you're going to want to join some big groups. Um, these are ones that you're not going to want to get a daily digest or a weekly digest for, most likely. You're just joining these groups because they're big. Linked HR, biggest group on LinkedIn, has over 400,000 members now. Well, Vivica, why do I want to join a big group? What's the point? The point is, and we'll talk about this a lot more later, on LinkedIn, the only two sets of people that you can actually send a message to, a LinkedIn email, are people that you're directly connected to, and you have their email addresses anyway, or people you share a group with. And that's what a lot of the next few slides are going to be talking about. So let's move along. Exactly what I'm talking about, what happens when your hands are tied. Um, <laughs> Now on LinkedIn, and something LinkedIn will never tell you, is you're only as visible as the size of your network. So if your network is too small and you do a search for an individual, I, my, my, I was doing a search for a garbage collector because um, I, that, that's one of the few people I can't find anymore on LinkedIn. So if you do a search for an individual um, and they're not in your network, i.e. they're not directly connected to you, they're not connected to someone who's connected to you, they're not connected to someone who's connected to someone who's connected to you, or you don't share a group with them, then all you get is their title and their location. And that's not very useful. Um, so what you want to do is join groups, big groups like we talked about, professional groups, association groups, industry groups, client industry groups, so that this does not happen. So you'll actually get an individual's name and a lot more information about them. So joining groups opens up your network and makes LinkedIn a lot more usable. If you have done a search on LinkedIn and you get that annoying out of network message, well, that's what this is all about. Your network is too small. So join some big groups. Again, some of the big groups to join Linked HR, Top Linked, and Lions. It stands for LinkedIn Open Networker, not for the animal. Rawr. It'll keep your hands from being so tied on LinkedIn and also keep you from having to get a paid account. Okay, now here is one of my favorite ninja tricks. Say you find someone on LinkedIn. I'm going to pick on my friend Betty. I hope she's on the phone on the call today. Um, so you find someone on LinkedIn that you want to connect with, but you notice that there's second level connection, which means if in this middle slide here, if you look over on the right hand side, it means I can send her an in-mail. That means I can pay LinkedIn 10 bucks to introduce me to her. Or if I have a paid account, I get one, you know, I'll use up one of my three in-mails. I can get introduced, but then I have to rely on the kindness of strangers to pass along that introduction. I can risk adding her to my network, which is not a bad idea, and it's, it's going to be my second option that I usually choose. But first, I'm going to see if she's a member of a group that I 
uh, or she's a member of a group either that I'm already a member of or maybe there's a group I should join. So the first thing I do is I'm going to use the advanced search. That's the first little screen right here, or the first little slide. I'm going to use the advanced search to find the exact person I'm looking for on LinkedIn. When that person comes up, in this case it was Betty, I'm going to click on their profile and then I'm going to scroll down to the very, very bottom of their profile. And at the bottom of their profile, that's all the groups they're a member of. And then I'm going to click on join. Now, obviously, if you look at this on the far bottom right-hand side, University of Memphis Alumni Group. I can't join that group because I'm not a University of Memphis alumni. But um, it's possible I could join the Juice Plus group because I have, in fact, taken Juice Plus before. Uh, little plug there. Um, maybe the Health and Wellness Practitioners Networking Group. That one I probably would join because I, I do some life coaching. So there would, there's my, my Health and Wellness Practitioner. That one would be okay. I would join that group. And as soon as that group accepted me, I would be able to go in and send Betty a message directly. Again, why do I want to send her a message rather than an introduction or rather than adding her to my network? Well, I don't risk her saying, I don't know Vivica, and it, that's known as an IDK on LinkedIn. And the more IDKs you get, the more people who say they don't know you, the less, um, the less able you are to connect to people on LinkedIn because LinkedIn's going to start asking for email addresses. So I don't risk that. I don't risk her rejecting me and I don't risk, um, you know, I don't risk getting stuck, getting into by not getting introduced by someone who I'm hoping will introduce me. So joining a group and then after you've been accepted into that group, reaching out to that individual, that is my reverse engineering ninja trick and it's, it's worked pretty well for me. Now remember, you can only join up to 50 groups, but once you've made that connection, if it's really not a useful group for you, you can always drop it. I don't recommend dropping groups unless they prove to be, you know, very, very un unhelpful. Remember, you can always go into the settings section and just stop getting the daily digests that fill up your inbox. I'll be taking uh, questions at the end of the presentation, so feel free to ask them now in the question box, but just know I'm going to, I'll answer them when we get to the end of the presentation. All right, now once you are accepted into a group, there's a little members tab that you can click on, and that is going to pull up all the members in the group. And then you can either look for an individual, if you look over here on the left-hand side um, of the screen, it says do your keyword search here. So you can search for an individual either by keyword or by name. Um, you can use a Boolean search, which is I'm looking for a CEO and technology. So this, this group search is going to look for anyone who has CEO and the word technology in their profile. It's going to show me who they are. And then when I scroll over to the right hand side of that particular screen, I'll, I can send them a message as opposed to sending them a $10 in mail, getting introduced, etc. So once you are already a member of a group, and again, this is why I suggested you join groups in your own industry and in your client's industry, you can just go into that group, go to that members tab, click on the search box, look for ideal clients, ideal strategic partners, ideal referral partners, and then send them a message. We will talk about what, um, what messages you can send later. <laughs> Okay, now one of the new tools, as I mentioned earlier, that I really, really like is called LinkedIn Skills. And um, if you email me at Vivica at LinkedIn to Business, you'll get that email address later. I will let you know when that, when that Skills webinar is coming up. There are many, many, many reasons I like Skills, but one of the reasons I like Skills is it shows me the very, very best groups in that particular skill set. So skills, if you're relatively new to LinkedIn or haven't played around in it for a while, is found under the more button. There's actually a more drop down button. So you'll go to that. 
drop that one down and you can go into skills. You type in the type of skill that you're interested in. I typed in marketing strategy. And then on that page are all the LinkedIn groups that focus on marketing strategy. And I can join that group right from that section. And I can do some more searches and some more searches and some more searches in related skills so that I cover all my bases. So that's pretty exciting to me that LinkedIn is actually doing the work for me. <laughs> and it's the most relevant, most pertinent groups for that particular skill set or industry. So again, you just go to more, drop down to skills, type in the skill that you're looking for or the keyword, the focus keyword that you're looking for. LinkedIn is going to pull up a page that's all about that particular skill set and then the groups that focus on that skill set will be there. Now, what else is going to be there? This is kind of a spoiler for next week. What else is going to be there? are the top people, not the top people on LinkedIn, but actually I think there's something going on between skills and uh, LinkedIn and Google because it's actually the top people on Google get pulled who are also in LinkedIn get pulled into the uh, professionals tab and you can use that reverse engineering trick I just talked about. So in this case, marketing strategy, the top person is actually a friend of mine, Chris Brogan. So I click on, I, I can click on Chris's name. If he's directly connected to me, oh, okay, here's, here's someone in my industry, thought leader, subject matter expert. I need to send them a message about this new LinkedIn presentation I have coming up. If he's not in my network, I just scroll down to the bottom of his profile, see what groups he's a member of, join that group as soon as I'm accepted, send him a message. Really powerful. I just love that reverse engineering tool. Okay, so now I, I hate slides that are all text like this, but this is really where we need to spend a lot of time. <laughs> so, so you get this, this really annoying lots of text slide. What do you say when you're in a group? Let's start on what you don't do. I've had a lot of people on my linked, uh, LinkedIn chat every Tuesday night talk about how they love groups and how they hate groups. Um, for a long time before there was something called open groups, uh, groups was really the best place where you could meet people. And before people realized it was, you could use like typical outbound salesy blasts on groups. It was where people were interacting. They were really building relationships. Now on social media, <laughs> building a relationship usually means asking and answering questions. Um, and then it got to be all this spammy stuff and all this annoying stuff. Then LinkedIn said, well, groups aren't working as well as they used to work because now there's all the spammy, annoying stuff. So then LinkedIn gave the moderators or the managers of the group the ability to move the spammy, annoying stuff into promotions or jobs tabs. The problem is a lot of groups don't do that. The moderators, um, either the group is just way too busy and the moderators can't keep up, which sometimes happens on linked strategies, um, or it's, uh, or the, or the moderator is lazy, you know? Um, so just know that if a group is really spammy and annoying, it's probably in part because the moderator is unable to keep up with the group in one way or another. So let's not contribute to that. What do you do in a group? Well, share your knowledge. If you're in an industry group or your client's industry group and you come across a tweet or you come across a webinar or you come across a blog post that you think is interesting, even if it's not your own, go ahead and share it. You can link, you can add links just like you would on Facebook. Um, you can add links to that webinar, to that blog post. Or you can just literally cut and paste a tweet over. That's what I do on the link chat. I when we have a LinkedIn chat that I like, that's again, that's my that's a LinkedIn chat on Twitter. If there's a tweet that I like, I'll actually pop it into the link chat because it's a more permanent record. To some of you, I know I'm speaking, you know, Lebanese, but just <laughs> for those of you who use Twitter and know about tweet chats, you, you get what I say. The rest of you don't even worry about it. But do share your knowledge. Chances are, if you find it interesting, someone else will find it interesting. 
And it's just, it just takes a minute. You're on Twitter, you're on Facebook, you're, you're, you know, you're checking out your latest blogs, you're checking out your blog feed, you find something interesting. It's literally a matter of cutting and pasting it into that two or three groups that you find interesting. The second thing you can do is help people out. Again, you will probably only be really interactive in two or three groups. You'll get a daily digest from those folks. So go ahead and take a look at the Daily Digest. If anyone is answering a question that you can answer, do it. If it's a two-second answer, excellent. If you go, you know, I've written a blog post on that before, go find that blog post, cut and paste the link and some of the information from that blog post, and give folks your answer. Not only are you repurposing that content you spent hours on earlier, but you're being useful, you're being helpful. Now, helping people out does not necessarily mean, oh, you're having problems with your carburetor? Well, I just happen to work at Carburetors R Us, um, although it could. You know, obviously, if you have a product or a service that would be of use to people, then by all means, share that with them as well. Do express your true opinions. You don't necessarily have to be abrasive, but sharing your true opinions does have a tendency to get a discussion or a conversation going. Now on LinkedIn groups, um, discussions are basically ranked or rated by how interactive a discussion is. So if you start a discussion or you're very interactive in a discussion, it's going to get a higher ranking. It's going to be seen by more people. In fact, the moderator may choose to make that, you know, the, 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 the focused um, discussion of the week, which by the way, the more people see you, see your interactivity, see how helpful you are, see how useful you are, that's where we get those inbound marketing techniques. That's when you start to draw potential clients to you. So it's okay to express your true opinions. Just be aware if you're an avid Democrat or an avid Republican or an avid Christian or an avid Muslim, you will turn some people off. It's just the way it is, but that's okay. Maybe they're not people you want to work with anyway. Uh, do take some time to answer and respond in a considerate uh, manner. If someone asks a question on a LinkedIn, um, in a LinkedIn group, and you're just going to say yes or no, mm, that's, that's not really, that, that's not really discussion worthy. Um, do take a minute or two to respond in a considered or considerate manner. And again, if you can repurpose that content, um, absolutely do that and do start your own discussions. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, there's, there's nothing wrong with asking questions. Again, that is the way that people create relationships. I love groups for that. I'll, I'll go into a group if I can't find an answer on something, or if I'm looking for a new product or service, I'll go into a group and ask my group. Um, and if it's a very interactive group, I'll usually get some good answers. Um, for those of you who write your own blogs, groups are a great place to get some, some blog, what I like to call blog fodder. So if you're looking um, to write a blog and you need people's opinions or you need some ideas, go ahead into your group. Like I'll go into link strategies group or my link chat group and, and write something like, you know, what do you want to know most about LinkedIn this week? Uh, it's time for me to write another article and I've got writer's block. And you'll get a lot of responses and maybe you don't answer all of, you don't write blogs for all of them that day, but <laughs> now you've got some, now you've got some blog fodder. Now you've got some stuff that you can start focusing and writing on and working on. What you don't do on groups, you don't use them for your sales letter. You're not going to join a group and then in every discussion, pitch your stuff. Uh, you will get unfollowed. Uh, and in fact, you will get reported. And if you do it enough times, the group moderator is likely to block you from the group. Um, don't use groups to share your business opportunity. I have nothing against MLMs. I've probably joined every single MLM out there, but I don't want to join a group. And all there is, is this best ever. No one has anything like it. Um, lotion and potion MLM business opportunity offer that I'm going to, I'm going to not look at that group anymore. And so the more you post things like that, 
the less likely other people are actually going to look at that group. They're going to turn it off. Again, this is this is where a group moderator really needs to step in and move all of those business opportunities and those sales letters to the promotions tab so that the only thing that you get on your group is really useful information. Don't use groups to solicit a downline. Again, no one's to, no one's going to participate in the discussion, and you are likely to get flagged. Uh, so it's just irritating to individuals. So essentially, be helpful, be useful, share useful information, ask questions, uh, use use your groups to to garner information that you can then use in blog posts. Use it as a resource. Use it as a tool. Don't use it as an outbound message sales letter blast. Seems kind of obvious and yet if you look at groups, not so obvious because there's still a lot of that going on. You know, if you've joined a group and you used to love that group and it used to be really great and you used to get lots of great information and you made some excellent connections through it and then it started going downhill, it either went turned into an open group or the moderator stopped um, paying attention to it, you can always ask the moderator to A, start paying more attention to it, or offer to be co-moderator yourself. It, uh, it takes maybe five to 10 minutes a day to manage all, the, manage all the information going in and out of a group. So, you know, there's, it's, not, it's, uh, it, it's, it's worth the offer, offer. And quite frankly, um, if I had a really giant group and it was getting a lot of spam and someone offered to manage it for me, I would totally let them. All right, so that is all groups that you join, but let's talk about creating your own group. Why in the world would you want to create your own group on LinkedIn? One of the reasons is that if you own your own group, you can send out a weekly announcement to everyone in that group, and you don't have to be directly connected to those individuals in order to do it. Now, the only people who can actually do that, of course, are people who do own a group. So even the managers and the mod, uh, even the moderators are not able to do that. Only the person who manages or owns the group is able to do that. Um, but that's a that's a big reason. And as I just mentioned, if you are going to create a group so that every week you can send out a message that says "Buy my stuff," your group's not going to grow and it's not going to last that long. If you join a group and every week you send out an, a useful tip, like for my link chat group, every you know every week maybe I'll send out the top the top tips from the LinkedIn chat, and then maybe a link to webinars I have coming up, both paid and free. So that is useful information. Um, so that's that's one reason you would want to create your own uh, your own group is to send out to to create a a a group of individuals that you can, again, share knowledge to. It's, it's filling your funnel, as it were, sharing the, the word about events coming up. And what's great about having your own group is you can feed not only other people's news feeds into your group, but your own news feed into your group. So if you, you're a very active blogger, um, by all means, feed your own blog into that group. It does it automatically. You don't have to worry about it again. And now you're repurposing that content that you created automatically. And you can highlight it by, by pulling it back in and cutting and pasting. But that RSS feed is a, a, a really nifty little tool. Um, you can also pull in individual... Um, individual blogs by linking them, individual uh, blog posts by linking them in that section as well. So that's that's kind of a nifty thing to do. Um, if you want to see uh, one of our groups, as I mentioned before, is the LinkedIn chat group, or it's just called Link Chat because you can't use the word LinkedIn in a group on LinkedIn. Go figure. Um, you can see kind of how we use it. So how I use it is a place to keep the discussion going after a LinkedIn chat, a place where people can start or continue to build the relationships um, because Twitter's, you know, Twitter's, Twitter's pr pretty fly by night. And when the chat's done, the chat's done. Uh, LinkedIn groups a lot more static. So uh, the, the most useful information gets pulled into there. People continue to have conversations over there. And of course, as people join my group, I can then send them messages, let them know about the next week's chat, that kind of thing. How you could feasibly use your own group, you could create a company group. 
and you can have it closed off or open. You can, you can decide how open or closed you want your group to be, but you can have your own uh, company group and, you know, communicate within the company, share information within the company. You can have an industry group where you can share information about an industry. That's a great way to fill the funnel. Um, you can have an association group. If you have a, you know, if, if, if you are the executive direct director for say women in networking, then by all means, you should have a women in networking group, just another place for people to share information or learn about your group on LinkedIn. So lots of different reasons to have a group on LinkedIn and to join groups on LinkedIn. Um, so I am going to uh, answer questions now. The questions will be listed. Right? There's a questions button. Just click on that. Go ahead and ask your questions. Apparently, I can't go live, so I can't show you how to actually do this on LinkedIn. But I'll try and I'll, I'll try and talk through uh, through the answers as best I can. And while I am doing that, um, here is my contact information again, my email address, how to find me on LinkedIn. Uh, if you want to tweet me or ask me any questions later, my Twitter handle is at LinkedIn expert. Um, and yeah, there's a bunch of other stuff, my, my LinkedIn website. And then I even have a LinkedIn done for you program. So that's all there, but let's go ahead and take your questions again. Feel free to ask questions. Okay. What is a downline? So, um, in MLM, a downline is when you have, uh, in a multi-level marketing company, a downline is someone you bring into come into the company and then someone they bring into the company and then someone they bring into the company. So that was mostly, I was talking about multi-level marketing and you're not going to be pitching your business opportunity in a LinkedIn group, unless, you know, let's just say you're a member of Visalis. Uh, which is a, a multi-level marketing 90-day um, shake program that they've got. And uh, Visalis has a group on LinkedIn. Well, then by all means, feel free to do whatever you want in the Visalis group because it's there for you as a network marketer. But in other, you know, if, if you're joining a health and wellness group, um, you probably don't want to be pitching your stuff or trying to uh, recruit downlines um, in that particular market. You'll probably get kicked out. Okay, second question. Um, if representing my company on LinkedIn, should I have a duplicate profile on LinkedIn and manage a group through that? Are there pitfalls to connecting it to my own LinkedIn profile? Excellent question. Can I have two profiles on LinkedIn? No, you can't have two. Well, you can have as many as you want, just don't get found out. Um, <laughs> just so you know, one of the reasons LinkedIn blacklisted me about three years ago, and I still haven't managed to crawl my way out of that one, um, is I had two accounts on LinkedIn. And if they find out about it, i.e. if someone turns you in, then LinkedIn will make you choose which account you want to keep. And if you've spent equal times growing your network and getting recommendations, it's kind of like Sophie's Choice. I mean, it's pretty hard to decide which, which, which personal profile you're going to delete. Now, there are things on LinkedIn called company profiles now, and you can create as many company profiles as you have uh, domain name URLs. So if I have Vivica at LinkedIn to Business, I can create a LinkedIn to Business company profile. It's found under companies, create a company. Um, if I have Vivica at Smart Blonde Media, then I can create a Smart Blonde Media uh, company, et cetera, et cetera. So you can create company profiles but unlike Facebook pages, it's not as interactive. It's not like it's a static stand or it's not like it's a stand on its own interactive profile. It has to be connected to your personal profile um, and, and it can't speak for itself as it were. What you absolutely can do though is create a company group. I highly recommend creating a company group because you can be relatively interactive as the moderator from that group. Um, you can use that group to build your network. Absolutely, you can create a company group. So that that is what I would um, recommend in that case. Do not have more than one than, do not have more than one personal profile on LinkedIn. Create as many company profiles as you have name at domainname.com, email addresses, and absolutely, absolutely, absolutely create a company group um, for your company that will help build your network. You can share information about new product or service. And, 
and and go ahead and repurpose the con you know whatever you wrote you you wrote to create your 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 company profile you can absolutely do that on <laughs> use that same information to explain what your group is and and why you've created it excellent question uh, let's see. Before I started learning from you, I left a group because nothing was happening and the only one using it was an advertising space. Should I rejoin? Uh, you know, I would talk to the moderator first. Um, if if you left a group because it was just nothing was there, um, you can talk to the moderator and see if, you know, maybe they'll let you co-moderate or co-manage. I always get that mixed up. Um, and if there were a ton of people on that group though, like if there's 20, 30, 40, 50,000 people, and that's how you were connecting to some individuals, then you might rejoin it. Um, so I just, you know, if you just rejoin it, then you can, um, just turn off the settings so you don't get the annoying daily digests. Can you use Hootsuite or you know, you know, I don't know that one, um, with your LinkedIn groups? Have you ever used these tools to streamline your content? Excellent question. Uh, not really. Um, I'm hoping that soon you can use Hootsuite and uh, I use Hootsuite and TweetDeck and Seismic. Um, I'm hoping that eventually you will be able to feed into LinkedIn groups like you can feed into Facebook pages. But right now, no, not really. Um, LinkedIn does have a share tool. If you go to the very, very bottom of LinkedIn where it says tools, there's a share on LinkedIn tool that you can actually pop into your tool, uh, into your browser toolbar that makes that a little bit easier. But right now, the only thing that you can use Hootsuite, um, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, assuming you knew, and some um, TweetDeck and, and Seismic for is to post to updates. I could do a whole other thing on updates. Um, one of, oh, I'm sorry, you didn't get audio. Will these slides be available? I tell you what, guys, um, if you email me with the contact information uh, or email me at vivica at linkedintobusiness.com, I will send you these slides. Yes. Um, is it okay to post your business URL at the end of your post? Absolutely. That's fine. No, absolutely. That's, that's perfectly fine. <laughs> Just don't make it a whole sales message. Um, I must be the only one that said I own a group. Let's see. Let's take a look at those votes. How many people have owned a group? Let's just take a look here. Uh, 13% of you own your own group. So yeah, you're right. There's not too many people who own a group. Uh, I need another option. I try and engage the groups, but I have not had any success. You know, um, we try engaging with an, with an individual within the group rather than just posting discussions. Sometimes that it depends on the group you're in entirely. Like our group's really interactive, but sometimes it doesn't work. So try creating a discussion or, or, or even, you know, even, even get a plan together with some of the group members to, to maybe kind of force, <laughs> force a interaction, uh, to go on, force an interactive discussion. Okay. Everyone's going to get on the group on Friday and we're all going to talk about this thing. Um, but yeah, I think maybe sometimes if you interact directly with an individual, uh, pose the question to them directly, you might get a little bit more interaction. It's, it's not as useful as it used to be. I, I, it's, I'm sad to say, um, that seems to be, that seems to be true. And that's again, why I'm doing this presentation, because I would really like there to be, um, more interaction and for, for groups to be as, as powerful as they used to be. I think I answered all the questions that were posed um, please, if you have any more questions, feel free to ask them. I, oh, there we are. We're at 1244. Um, uh, uh, the company that put this on Bright Talk would love for you guys to rate this, to see if this is something you want us to do again, or if you would like me to, to do other LinkedIn talks. Um, so please on, uh, go ahead and rate this. We have another, I believe four minutes until this will go ahead and turn itself off. Um, apparently after, as soon as we're done with this, if you want to go back to the, uh, go back to the link, it will then be recorded and you can come back to this at any time and listen to it. So feel, please feel free to share it too on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on Facebook. Yay. We have another question. Do moderators of groups keep track of users who unjoin their group? Um, 
I don't. <laughs> That's an excellent question. I don't. Um, I, I'm just way too busy. I'm there are, you know, yes, you can tell if someone leaves your group, but LinkedIn won't tell you that someone has left their group. So if you've left a group, um, you know, don't, don't, don't be expecting a phone call from the moderator asking you why. Uh, could a moderator deny you to join a group? Um, they Again, they're probably not going to know that you unjoined the group, but um, they absolutely can deny you from joining a group for whatever reason they want. Uh, moderators have the ability to accept or not accept people. Mostly this happens in very focused industry groups or alumni groups where they're like, well, you're not a member of Harvard, so no, you can't join us. Uh, I'm always close to that 50 groups uh, to do this reverse marketing. I might have to unjoin a group and then group join again. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I, I would say don't even worry about that. Chances of, of anyone knowing, extremely rare. Um, excellent question. Can moderators of group download the member list? Not anymore. What an excellent question. You used to be able to... Um, you used to be able to download your member group, your membership list, but no, you can't do that anymore. We're very, very sad about that. Um, the problem was, of course, that most people were... Most people were abusing, well, not most, a lot of people were abusing it. They were downloading it. And then rather than once a week sending out an announcement, you know, 50 times a week, they were sending out an announcement. So that was unfortunate. Okay. Um, any other questions? Go ahead and go to the rating section and rate this uh, webinar. Again, if you want the slides or if you have any questions for me, you can always, here, I'll close this for right now. You can always contact me at Vivica at linkedintobusiness.com. Ask for the slides. I'm happy to send them to you. If you go to the link that you went to to find this presentation, and I'll put it on Twitter again, um, and I'll put it on LinkedIn again then you can listen to this presentation again if you want to. Feel free to share it with other people. Um, okay, we have another question. I'll just keep doing this till they turn me off. Oh, <laughs> okay, they're going to they're gonna close me down in two minutes. Uh, uh, if you start your own group in LinkedIn, how can you legitimately drive traffic to it? Excellent question. Thank you. Um, I create, if you look at my, if you look at the, um, do I have it on here? Yeah, no. If you look at the, my own group slide, which is right here, you'll notice I've created a bit.ly. It'll actually turn in a linked dot in, but I have created a bit.ly for my group and I put that group on Twitter. I put that group in my email signature. I uh, put that group on Facebook. I put that group on LinkedIn and I just say, this is what our group does and we'd love for you to join it. So yeah, that's an excellent question. Um, create a bit.ly or a, a tiny URL. Um, excellent, excellent question. Thank you for asking that. I meant to mention that and I forgot. I gave you five. I enjoyed that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I enjoyed the tool from the attendee perspective. Thank you very much. So again, go ahead and rank this presentation and I think they're going to shut us down here now. So thank you again so much for participating. I hope you found it useful. Again, I'm available on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, email me, call me. I'm pretty good at responding. And again, thank you so much for being on this presentation.